this Xbox Series X has been sent in for no power, I think. So let's see if we can blow ourselves up, shall we? Right, let's go boom, shall we? There you go, look, now you can see. That's an ugly cam and a half. Yeah, you know it. Anyway. Uh, <laughs> yeah, so this ain't working. It ain't powering on at all. All right. Travis is just busy working, mate. Wish the proper cam worked and not the ugly one. Yeah, sorry, mate. <laughs> I'm Mr. Singing. No, you don't. <laughs> you liar. <laughs> You're such a liar. <laughs> so, let's find out... Well, the first thing I'll do is find out if the power supply is um, gone bad. That is possible, but it has been opened before, so there is a chance that it, something could have been damaged. Uh, I'm not sure if this is a prior repair attempt gone wrong or what, but we'll see. We shall see. I've just lost my... Uh, yeah. Uh, by the way, X-clamp tools back in stock if anyone is looking for them. This video probably still would have been here without today's sponsor. But hey, it's time to show something, right? So here goes. Here at The Code of Productions, we love nothing more than to take as much money from you, the viewer, as we possibly can which is why we're proud to talk to you about consolefix.shop, a great place for you to spend your hard-earned cash. I mean, yeah, fair enough. You get parts and supplies that help you fix things, but you've got to give me some money in return. Nothing in life's free, and if you pay me for it, you might appreciate it more. Or not. Hey, I'm not judging. With that being said, we do have some pretty cool stuff on the shelves, including power supplies, HDMI ports, charging chips, MOSFETs, and whatever else you can think of that will give you the illusion that you're getting a good deal. So head on over to the online store by clicking on the link in the video description. And if there's one thing I can guarantee, is that there will be a way for me to take your money. Console Fix, your friendly money grabbing YouTuber. The first thing I'll do is try another Nexus board. That's going to be the most, well the easiest thing to do I guess, is to try another Nexus board. So, if I can find one. Then I'll try one. Right, here's one. Nope. Absolutely nada. All right, so Nexus board isn't the cause. Wouldn't that have been nice if that if it was that simple? Let's have a look. Let's carry on. So I've got to get it stripped down then. So I'm going to just make sure that we've got 12 volts out on the PSU. If we haven't, then we'll look into that. If we have, then we'll look into the board. So, let's probe this. Yep, yeah, I'm getting 12 volts on that. Uh, you won't even see it, will ya? 12 volts. Ah, you can see. Squint. Squint and you'll see. It's 12 volts. I need to put the, cam the uh, thingy back on. Make sure I'm getting 12 volts on this one. Yeah. Okay, so the power supply appears to be working. Let's just check in continuity mode for a short to ground on the 12 volt. Let's see if we're getting that. No, 
No short on that one. No short on that one, apparently, either. Interesting. All right, well, I know we're good in terms of 12 volt. Let's just have a look at the Nexus connector under the microscope, just to check it. Right, why has this been opened before? That's my, that's my first question. It's been worked on before, but why? Has it just been serviced, or is there something else going on? Let's have a look at the Nexus connector. Let's make sure that hasn't been damaged. Doesn't appear so. So the Nexus connector, Nexus is the code name. Um, it's this connector here. So it's called a Nexus connector, um, and that's responsible for the power button. A lot of the time we do see that get damaged. Unfortunately, my luck is nothing but bad luck, so it's never the Nexus connector for me. It's never anything simple. I'm going to check inside the connector just to make sure. Yeah, that looks absolutely fine. No problems there. Okay, so let's isolate what board it is then. Wrong camera, that's the one. Uh, let's isolate what board it is. Let's switch one of the safe bridge boards. Or rather, let's switch the safe bridge board and see if it attempts to power on. It won't actually boot up, but let's just see if we get any signs of life from it with the safe bridge board. I may try a power supply in a second anyway, just to just to be sure. Uh, that's the original, isn't it? Yeah. It's the safe bridge board. Here's the safe bridge board. Okay, well, now we know what board to work on. We can proceed. Let me just get this donor safe bridge board out of the way so I don't get it mixed up. Can we short the Nexus connector pins to pair on the console? You can, but I'd rather not. Yeah, so now we know that we can. Uh, now we know that we've got an issue with the safe bridge board, just for sanity check, just in case someone's just not connected things back up properly. I'm going to just plug this back in and just make 100% sure that it doesn't pair on with this Nexus board. Uh, power supply. Yeah, stone dead. Stone dead with that power supply, with that Nexus board, uh, with that safe bridge board. So we know what board is causing it now. That's why it's always good to have a a spare on hand, one that works, because well, it allows me to do that. And rather than sitting there fault finding the main board, I can sit there and fault find the safe bridge board, knowing that that's my issue. I'll make sure it's not the Wi-Fi board putting a short on it. 20th of January 2021, the date code on this is. Just over a year old. Just out of warranty. Ivis just subscribed AJ on Voice. Twitch. Thank you for subbing on Twitch, mate. I really appreciate that. By the way, if anyone's got Amazon Prime and you want to support me, the best way to do it is completely free by going over from YouTube. Just go over to the dark side for a minute, subscribe on Twitch with Amazon Prime, and then you can uh, support me for free. Right, so just to make sure, let's just, well, let's just get rid of that heat sink. It's not needed. Not at the minute. Just to make sure, I'm going to just plug in the board without the Wi-Fi board on. Or Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, whatever it is. Um, I'm just going to make 100% sure because it could be causing an issue. So I want to be 100% sure before I carry on. Now I've got to try and do a balancing act because I haven't got the heat sinking. <laughs> I don't want to short the boards out, obviously. Nope, it's not that board. So this is all just about, like the first, first few stages is all just about isolating where your short is or where your fault is. So obviously we've got an issue, but it's just about isolating where the fault is. Like, Swapping boards backwards and forwards and just trying to figure out 
Um, is it the APU board or is it the SafeBridge board? If it's the SafeBridge board, is it the Wi-Fi board that's connected to it? Blah, blah, blah. Eventually, you get to just... Spanafix just resubscribed for three and months. And work on one three board. Months. Time flies. <coughs> so we know the rest is appearing fine um, because we're giving a beep on beep off with the non-working SafeBridge board. So... Now we'll look into this one, see if we can find anything on this. Uh, actually, let's check these ports quickly. Nope, they appear fine. Cool. Uh, Spanifix, thank you, buddy. Really appreciate that, mate. Liquid metal's not user-friendly. Yeah, it's definitely not. It's definitely more for enthusiasts. Okay, someone's already worked on this board. We've got Flux on here. So it looks like someone's already been trying to figure things out. So that would explain why it's been opened. So I don't think we've got a short on the 12 volt board. Let's just double check 100%. Or rather, we haven't got a, a direct short on the 12 volt. No. So let's just run through some test points. Might as well start with this one here. Yeah, so 3.3 FTDI, that's working. Or rather, that's uh, not showing up as short, should I say. Uh, let's check that. No, so this trace here is the main, the main, uh, damn it. You know what, we're gonna, get, we're gonna get focus issues on this because the board's unbalanced, it's not quite level. I say not quite, it's not level at all. So we're going to get focus issues and stuff, but yeah, we've got a cap missing here, interestingly, uh, on the fan connector. That's not going to cause it to not power on, that's not an issue. Let's check the 12 volt gated. So I'm just in continuity mode looking for any issues here. Uh, bind switch. Oh, R172. He's showing us short to ground. What's on R172? I'm going to download a schematic, courtesy of my own Discord. Those two pads are ground. Yeah, I'll just look. I'll just re I'll just double checked it. I, I've just realised it easier. Uh, so yeah, they are ground. I'm going to ignore that. Um, that's fine. Uh, right, let's have a look then. So SB1P1. So that's Safebridge 1.1 volt. Not short. 1.8 volt standby isn't short. 1.1 volt standby, hello. Uh, actually, 20 ohms. Hmm. Don't know. Don't know. Let's check on a working board on 1.8 standby. Uh, 1.1 standby. Well, I can use this known good board as a point of reference, knowing that this allows the board to attempt to turn on. So, let's just have a look at the 1.1 standby. Yeah, okay, so we have got a short on 1.1 standby. Um, right, okay. Let's just double check that now that it's had some time to relax itself a little bit. I'm trying for the caps to drain. Yeah, we have... Well, it's reading at 15 ohms, but I'm in continuity mode there. Let's have a look at... Resistance mode. Yeah, 15 ohms short to ground on... 1.1 standby. So that's going to explain the no power. So let's find out where that goes... Where that comes from. So page 14... No, it's not page 14. What is this? It's uh, 1P1 standby. It looks like it comes from the South Bridge. Hmm. All right. It looks like it comes from the South Bridge. Um, well, that sucks a little bit because that means reboarding a South Bridge, doesn't it? I really don't want to do that. Um, desktop. Uh so yeah, V1P1 standby, that comes from uh, 
It looks like that comes from Santo, which is the uh, U48. Ah, oh, you suck. You suck, you suck, you suck. Where else does it come from? U34, MP2161. Uh, so it takes 5 volts in on U34. Right, let's find U34 quickly. Right, U34, where the hell is U34? So that's U30. U34 there. So, I'm going to remove that chip first. I'm not removing this um, South Bridge. Well, it's going to be a last resort removing the South Bridge because it's a big chip. And I don't want to be remo removing the South Bridge if I don't have to. I'm going to remove U34 first. Let me just increase my heat. There's nothing sensitive here, so I'm going to go 480. Let's have a look at the resistance again. Still 16 ohms. So where does that go from there? Uh, let me just drop this chip back on. So I saw someone the other day removing a load of chips uh, to try and isolate a short, kind of like what I'm doing here. But they left the chips off as they was doing it, and I think that's a bad idea most of the time, because if you end up removing like 10, 12 chips, um, you're just creating yourself a load more work before you can actually verify that your issue is fixed. So I like to put the chips back as I'm doing them. Now I'm looking for my flux because I like to lose that as well. Got it. <coughs> <laughs> Mr. Bridger, you're a legend, dude. Thank you, mate. Mr. Underscore Bridger Super Chatted $6.31. Girl, your booty is so round I just want to play around. Boom boom boom. Let me hear you say way no. Let me say boom. Oh, boom, you're singing boom. Songs to Wayne. Say way no. Right, okay, let's um Let's isolate this short here. Let's remove the inductor. Let's see which side of this is short. Alright, so we've got 20k on that now. Where that uh, on this side of the inductor and 17 ohms that side so C198 let's have a look at C198 on the schematic so C198 goes to uh, so that's on the um, the output side of 1.1 volt standby Uh, it doesn't really give me any information on where that actually is short though, that's the only problem. Um, it looks like it goes through some layers on the board unfortunately. Uh, it says there's a diode there but there's not. Uh, so I think that does probably go directly to the South Bridge to be honest with you. Um, let's just see if it goes anywhere else. Uh, so it goes to U34. It does go to U32 which is just by the, um, just next to it, just near that. So U32 is a transistor just above. I could inject voltage here, but I'd rather not on a 1.1 volt rail because they are pretty sensitive. So I'd rather not inject voltage if I don't have to. I don't think it's going to be this, but I'm going to remove it anyway, just in case it goes loops through the board. Because we haven't got a board view, that's the problem. No, we've still got, still got a 15 ohm short on that. I, I didn't think it would be that, but... Yeah, so, no such luck. Um, okay, well, th well, I think I'm going to do then is inject a vault into this, just to... Just to see if I can pick anything up with the bench supply. Because I don't want to remove that safe bridge if I don't have to. So let me just set my bench supply up. 300 milliamps at the minute, but the board is still a little bit warm. So I'm going to let that cool down for a minute just to allow the resistance to change. Doesn't appear to be anything in this section at all. Uh, safe bridge is getting warm, unfortunately. <laughs> <laughs> the temperature just dropped. 
Um, temperature's just dropped on the damn thing. Uh, sorry, not the temperature. Current drawer has just dropped on the damn thing. But... You can see the amount of heat we've actually got on the um, thermal camera where the safe bridge is, just there. So it was getting hot. So I think it is the safe bridge. Cracked PCH and V-Ball. Uh, no, not cracked PCH. It's going to be uh, just, bad, just bad PCH. So, unfortunately, that means removing it. I'm going to do this without the microscope camera. Like, remove it without the microscope camera because... Well, I just don't get enough room under the microscope. So I always like to remove it without the camera, without the microscope. I'll just preheat the board first. Just heat up from a distance. There we go. So yeah, you can see just how big of a chip this actually is. It's not fun doing these, but it's better than writing off a board. But it's certainly not fun doing safe bridge replacements. Right, so just replace this with leaded solder just to make it easier to clean. Very carefully get that blob of solder off, otherwise we're just wasting wick. I'm going to change tips to a brand new tip that I've just bought. Yay! Got my spatula tip. Right, so I'm just going to grab some wick. A little bit too much, uh, a little bit too much wick here. Little bit too much wick there then. Oh, I love those wick, those uh, tips. Absolutely love them. Can't beat those tips for this kind of work. When you've got a large area to work with, like APU, safe bridges, that sort of stuff. These tips are great. I mean, they do cost, I mean, these are T12 tip, uh, tips and they do still cost like 13, 14 pound each. But honestly, you can't go wrong with them. I have got another one which I use for APUs. Look at that bad boy. That's what you call a tip. Now I just think they're really good for this kind of work because it saves a little bit of time. And you can still use a normal tip, but look, you don't have to use those tips. I just think that they're a time saver. That's all. There we go. Beautiful. The board's nice and clean. Right, so now I need to just basically fix a few of these pads up because unfortunately when you're wicking away a large area you are pretty much guaranteed to tear, well not tear, but to uh, expose a couple of traces like this look. So you see you get like kind of a tadpole effect on these. Now the problem with that, obviously the traces are still intact and stuff, but the problem with the, the getting the tadpole effect is it's just somewhere for the solder to be able to run off to, which means that on some solder balls you're going to get solder run off, which means the solder ball itself is going to be smaller because it's going to seep. So you've just got to go around and 
anywhere where you get this exposed trace, where you get like this tadpole effect, you just need to cover it with a little bit of conformal coating just to make sure that it's not going to allow solder to run off. Jamie Lowe's became Jamie, a member. thank you, mate. I really appreciate that, mate. Thanks for the support. Thank you, buddy. You see one on the top side, too. Uh, I'll have another look in a minute, buddy. Yeah, just cure these. Uh, one thing I do need to do, though, is just get rid of this excess mask. Just like that. And there's also a little bit of excess mask here. That needs to go. There we go. Second row, top, middle. You are 100% correct. You are 100% correct. Appreciate that, mate. Thank you. Mucho gracias. See, that's a good thing about doing these live. Thank you very much. Let's just cure that quickly. I'm using UV light to cure that, by the way, to harden the uh, solder mask. Been a member for 11 months. Nice, dude. I really appreciate it, mate. Yep, there we go. That'll do. Uh, I think I've got them all now, so it should be absolutely fine. So what I'm going to need is... You, can't, you obviously can't buy these chips, so I'm going to need a donor board. And one thing I can confirm to you all is... We can take the, we can take the safe bridge off a... Series S. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to take one off a of Series S, but I'm not going to do this from above the board. I'm going to weigh the board down. So this is going to take quite some time. It's going to take a considerable amount of time. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to weigh the board down, hang it over the edge of the table, and I'm going to remove the chip from underneath because I don't want to damage it with heat. So whenever I'm removing a chip to either reball for resale or if I'm removing it for uh, reboarding to reuse for myself, whenever I can, I like to remove it by heating up from underneath. So yes, it does take a lot longer, but at the same time, it means not putting any direct heat on the chip itself. And that allows me to make 100% sure that I'm not going to damage the chip during the removal process. So, yeah, takes longer, but it doesn't really matter. You know, what's an extra three minutes, four minutes to save risking damaging like a 50 pound chip? Because these chips ain't cheap. So you'll start to see the, the uh, flux of flow as the heat's transferring through the board. I could preheat the board and remove it using the BGA station, but it's really not worth doing it with the BGA station. I probably will actually come to above the board for the last little bit, but you know it is a really big chip. It's not exactly a small chip. Like a normal, like a normal safe bridge on a, let's say for example, a PS5. They're quite small, so they're simple to do. But the problem is these are large and they're bigger than the nozzle itself. So I can't get enough heat transfer on it. So I probably will, for the last little bit at least, flow from the above. I'll see how it goes. Nah, we're going to have to heat from above. Just a little bit, but it won't take long. And it means that this just got less direct heat on the actual chip itself. So that's fine. There we go. Yeah, by the way, the safe bridge for the Series S and Series X, exactly the same chip. So I'm going to swap back to a normal tip for this, because I need to get rid of some oxidation on the actual chip itself. So I'll use quite a large chip. Uh, sorry, quite a large tip. But I'll switch to... Um, switch to this larger tip. Uh, uh, sorry, this normal tip just to... Make sure it gets done properly. So obviously when you remove the chip, you end up with a little bit of oxidation on the chip, on the pads. So you go, 
I'm going to use the right tape to be able to scrape the pads a little bit. So you can see these pads, it looks like they're missing, but they are coming back as I'm tinning it. Ah, didn't clean the tip properly. I'll just use this to run over it, it's fine. That was a bit of a waste of wick. <coughs> I think it's time to order some more flux, that's a little bit too smoky for my liking. Um, this it could be a sign that the flux is starting to go off. Uh, I've had it for quite a while. But there's letting off a little bit too much smoke. So it could be a sign that the flux is going bad. Right. Ignore those marks, that's just where the soldering iron's been. It's absolutely fine. Looks like we've got all the pads. Um, and I would say that, that is good for reballing. Yeah, I think we're good there. really just slide off enough solar balls to have the perfect amount of solar balls on here. I think you'll find I did. That was planned all along. I knew exactly how many I was removing off the chip. Look at that. Boom. I knew exactly how much I was looking, removing off the chip. Absolutely perfect. We'll remove that one and pretend it never existed, all right? Boom. How about that then? Beat that. <laughs> oh dear. Beat that. Now if I edit the video right, it'll look like I put the perfect amount on first drop. <laughs> uh, we've got a little bit of excess flux here which is going to cause a problem. Um, yeah, knew it. Knew it. That would have dragged a load of solder balls along with it as it started to move around the chip. So I'm set at 480 degrees Celsius at 1% airflow for this. Just while I flow these solder balls in with no nozzle on. One ball's blew off. Let's 
going to fix these up before I apply some more flux. Another ball blew off. There we go. Spanner became a member. Chaos underscore King became a member. CGX became a member. Beautiful. Right, let's drop a nozzle on. Give it one more reflow at high speed. There you go. Well, I'm going to let that trip cool down for a minute. Right, pin, nu pin numero uno. Missing, missing pad there. That matches up with that. I should really have checked the resistance on this first, but oh well. Uh, one thing I need to do with this is just hold the chip there because the, the chip's on a little bit, the board's on a little bit of an angle. And if it's going to slide anywhere, it's going to slide to the right. Right, it's not going to slide now. Good. That went well. I've been working on this device for, for too damn long. Let's see if this fixes it. So let's go back to 1.1 standby. And let's have a look what my resistance is on that now. Now that the board's cooled down a bit. 5,000 ohms. Boom. 5,000 ohms on 1.1 standby. That's a good reading. Perfect. So let's just clean that up. I'm going to warm this up just to warm this flux up. I just want to clean the board up now. Let's fire it up indeed. Yeah, so I'll just, I'll just like to clean up my own my own mess. But yeah, that's a perfect reading. Uh, 5,000 ohms and the bulb is still warm, so it's obviously resistance is going to be a little bit different to what it should be. But that is a good reading. Let's see if it boots Mr. Plastic Clip for the PSU cable. Yeah, I'll, um, you know, I'll redo it in a minute. I knew that, I was just seeing how many of you guys noticed. <laughs> to be fair, I don't actually put them back together on stream anyway, I do it the day after, so it doesn't really matter. Putting them back together is boring. I like to, uh, straight to the point, get the fixes done, and put them back together in my own time. Moment of truth, is it going to work? You're goddamn right it is. You goddamn right it is, baby! Let's get it, let's go! Oh yeah! Ugly cam it is. Boom. Boom. Job done. Ugly cam. Ah! Might be ugly, but we got the win. <laughs> yep, that'll do, mate. Happy days. One more console back on the road. Nice. Nice. Just in time. Hello, Luna. Come say hello to the people. Hey, kitty, kitty. What's the matter? She's looking at a bowl, so I assume, it's, I assume she wants feeding. 1.1 volt short. Obviously, that goes directly to the safe bridge. Or 1.1 volt standby, sorry, I should say. 
because there's two rails on the Series X. There's the 1.1 volts and there's the 1.1 volts uh, standby. Um, so the 1.1 volt standby rail is generated by the safe bridge. Or rather, it comes through the safe bridge. It's, a, it's actually generated by the 5 volt rail, but it comes through the safe bridge. Um, and, uh, yeah. Unfortunately, that isn't a cheap chip. So I don't charge for repairs anymore. I do labour for free, but the customer will still have to pay for the chip. Um, so unfortunately, it's still going to cost the customer. Like I don't, I don't even know how much I sell these for in my store, like fifty or sixty pound. So it is still going to cost the customer something. Uh, but I do it for con. I do repairs for content these days because I just enjoy doing content. But and then I basically do it on donation based if they want to leave a donation they're welcome to sort of thing um, but it's still going to cost the customer a little bit of money because unfortunately those chips ain't cheap but yeah there's one more console fixed by console fix